Say tricks. So you like ad clear, huh? When someone asks, who's running? You proudly exclaim, not it. When someone gives you a hard time about not learning the mechanics, you think to yourself, I'm gonna clear the fuck out of these ads. Then this video is for you. So let's get built. Our super needle storm is used for boss damage and has a panic switch. Which rift you choose is personal preference. The type of rift does not matter for our needs. Our melee, Arcane Needle, has three charges and unravels targets on hit. This will be important later. For our grenade, we are using Shackle Grenade, paired with our first aspect, Mindspun Invocation. Mindspun Invocation allows us to consume our Shackle Grenade to grant us Weaver's Trance for 25 seconds. While in Weaver's Trance, any final blow will trigger a suspending explosion. Our enemies do need to be somewhat tightly grouped to make the most use of this, but another part of our build will make up for it. With Weaver's Call, casting our rift spawns three Threadlings. These Threadlings will cover more distance than our Shackle Explosions, allowing us to spread our wave of destruction much more easily. We are not using the Wanderer aspect because our exotic armor gives us a similar function that we will cover more closely later. First up with our fragments, we have the Thread of Evolution, which allows our Threadlings to travel further and causes them to deal 33% more damage. Thread of Generation gives us grenade energy when we deal any damage. Our grenade ability is our most important, so we want to make sure our uptime is as high as possible. We will take a hit to our discipline, but this fragment is more than worth it. Thread of Warding will give us Woven Mail for 10 seconds every time we pick up an Orb of Power. Woven Mail gives us an additional 60% damage resistance on top of our Resilience stat. With tier 10 resilience, that comes out to 72% damage resistance. This will help a lot with our survivability. Lastly, we have Thread of Mind. When we defeat suspended targets, we will be granted class ability energy. We use our rift to get our grenade back when we don't have any orbs. The stronger the enemy that is defeated, the more energy we will receive. For our exotics, we have the Swarmers. Earlier, I mentioned these as our alternative to the Wanderer's aspect. What I meant by that is that when our Tangles are destroyed, they will spawn two Threadlings due to the Swarmer's exotic perk. This perk also causes our Threadlings to unravel any enemy that they damage. When an enemy becomes unraveled, they release three Seeking Threads towards themselves or adjacent enemies which deal 29 damage per thread and spread the unraveled debuff on hit. Friendly reminder that our powered melees also unravel foes, as well as our weapons due to one of our seasonal artifacts that we will cover later. My exotic weapon of choice is the Navigator. I know that not everyone will have this exotic due to how new it is, but don't worry, I have an alternative suggestion and this weapon is not crucial to the build. That said, its exotic perk, Protective Weave, makes getting woven mail a little bit easier in a fire team. When you shoot an ally with 8 rounds, you and your ally will be granted woven mail. You will also be refunded 5 rounds. Weft Cutter, our other exotic perk, will cause a target to become severed after receiving sustained damage from the navigator. This means they will deal 33% less damage to us and our allies, which is pretty nice on top of our woven mail. My alternative exotic weapon of choice is Malfeasance, mainly because this thing has become an absolute beast against bosses and guardians this season with its new catalyst that grants it Vorpal Weapon, especially if you are running a Lucky Pants build, which I may cover in a future video. Other weapons I enjoyed for this build are the Nicholas SMG because of its Volt Shot perk. 
I use this as my backup add clear weapon for when my navigator is out of ammo, but you can substitute this with whatever you wish. My heavy was the new laser painter because it is a strand linear fusion rifle, which allowed me to double dip on all of my strand armor mods. While this build is meant for ad clear, having a linear fusion for our heavy allows us to still put out respectable damage during boss phases or when taking down champions. Now let's go over what mods I feel work best for this build. On our helmet, we want to have Harmonic and Arc Siphon so that any rapid kills we get with any of our weapons will give us orbs of power. Since I preferred to use the Navigator for the majority of content, I put a special ammo finder on my helmet to ensure a steady flow of ammo. This could also be substituted with an Ashes to Assets to give us our Super Sooner. We aren't using our grenade directly to kill enemies, but the suspended explosions from our Weaver's Trance still count as grenade damage. On our gauntlets, we have Grenade Kickstart to give us about 38% grenade energy back when we have 4 armor charge stacks. If we don't have any armor charge, it will still refund about 13%. We also have impact induction to give us grenade energy back when we cause damage with our melee. My research found that we should be getting around 20% energy back per melee, but in my own playtesting I felt like it was a bit less than this, but it was still a very noticeable amount. Also, keep in mind that there is a 7 second cooldown between activations for this mod, so you will want to be strategic with how you use each of your 3 melee charges. Don't just go spamming it around unless you absolutely need to in order to survive. Finally, we have heavy handed to generate orbs of power on each of our power melee final blows as a bonus for those moments when we do use our melee. On our chest piece, we have two harmonic reserves to give our navigator and our laser painter extra reserve ammo. This is mainly to keep our trace rifles supplied with ammo but is an added bonus for our heavy. We also have one charged up mod to enable us to hold one additional armor charge for a max of four armor charges. On our legs, we have recuperation and better already. Recuperation causes our health regeneration to begin immediately upon picking up an orb of power, while better already gives us an instant 75 point bump to our health. I prefer better already over recuperation, but admittedly my armor is lacking in the recovery department. That said, feel free to substitute one of these for a mod of your choice if you feel like having both is unnecessary. I recommend replacing recuperation with innervation so you gain grenade energy on every orb pickup. I also opted for an Absolution mod so that all of my abilities get a small boost on every orb pickup since I use my Rift and Melees to get my grenade back in a pinch. And that brings us to our class item. We have one Bomber and one Outreach mod to give us a 20% bump in grenade and melee energy when we cast our Rift and Reaper so that after casting our Rift our next weapon kill will spawn an orb of power. The cherries on top are our artifact mods. Improved unraveling increases the damage dealt by unraveling a target. Strand Soldier grants unraveling rounds whenever we have woven mail while using a strand subclass. And Conductive Cosmic Needle helps our fire teams by making targets affected by strand debuffs take more damage from arc and void abilities. Honorable mention to Technicolor Siphon for granting a combo strand and arc siphon mod for 3 energy. This did not benefit my character, but it may benefit yours. The last thing I want to cover is the ability rotation for this build. First, consume your shackle grenade for Weaver's Trance and if able, apply woven mail to an ally so that you can get woven mail. Second, Kill the weakest enemy to deal explosive damage and suspend nearby enemies. You will likely also spawn a tangle and unravel all enemies with your unraveling rounds. Third, let unravels seeking threads do all the work for you, causing a domino effect of suspending explosions. 
more often than not, the seeking threads will detonate any tangles that spawn, causing even more explosive damage and spawn two threadlings to mop up anything that remains. Fourth, scoop up all the orbs you have created to build up your armor charge. Lastly, if needed, cast a rift or use a powered melee to get your grenade back. Now, rinse and repeat until nothing is left standing. Once it dies, they win. Invaders out. Get next.